One, two, one, two. Bit louder, perhaps. Okay, I think. No, that's too loud. Uh, around here, that should be an acceptable audio level, I hope. Uh, let me know if you can or cannot hear me. Um, I have Twitch chat, Telegram, and uh, Twitter open on the second screen, so if you can reach me on one of those, I should hopefully see it. So let's actually start to show you all something. Hello! There's an unusually repulsive cat in the chat. Hello! Alicia, is that you? <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm not sure who that is. Hi! Uh, and I think I disabled the Twitch uh, low latency mode, so... Yes! <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I won't see your responses immediately, or... Well, I will, but then you won't see the response from me immediately, or whatever. But hopefully that helps with uh, bandwidth issues or stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're sitting in front of an empty uh, query window, and need to find some query to write. and. One idea I had was uh, US federal agencies dissolved under the Trump administration, which is a bit grim, but there was this story going around of uh, this, um, what was it? The epidemic response team being shut down in 2018 or something. And I was wondering if we can find things like that because uh, that would be interesting. So let's see if we can find an item for that. Epidemic response, something like that it would be, I guess. Uh, oh, of course, it's going to be a lot of scientific articles. Mm. Not much. Okay, so I guess I would first need to find the uh, name of that thing. Trump dissolved epidemic 2018, something, I think it was in 2018. Pandemic response team. Pandemic response team. Is that a thing? Uh, no. Oh god, it has a Snopes page. What does that say? Yes, it's true. Okay. Uh, so the pandemic response team is... White House officials tasked with directing a national response to a pandemic. Blah, blah, blah. There was an executive branch team eliminating Zemer's position. Who was Zemer? Rep Rear Admiral Timothy Zemer. Does he have a, twi uh, a Twitter? <laughs> a Wikidata item? No. Okay, so... This might not actually have been a federal agency as such, and it looks like it might not have or have had a Wikidata item, so I guess that query doesn't work unless I can think of something else. I mean, we can start with uh, an anything that was dissolved since his inauguration, so that would be select stuff where item dissolved, uh, abolished or demolished at a time uh, where that time is greater than uh, whenever Trump's been president. Uh, Trump inauguration, I guess. And let's look for that. Donald Trump. Uh, what is that? Is that a position held, I guess? Held... Uh, and the value needs to be President of the United States, and the start time would be the Trump. It's probably not the inauguration, because that's more the ceremony, I think. Trump presidency start. Let's just call it that, because that's what it is, the start time of this star statement. And, um, I don't know, limit 50 in case it's too much. Ah, okay, no, two seconds, that's fine. Um, so that was 20 January 2017, and then one thing that was dissolved two days after is... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh my god. Oh 
my god! <laughs> I'm sorry, I was not prepared <laughs> for that. Two days after the beginning of the Trump presidency, the very first item on Wikidata to be dissolved after that is a communist party. <sighs> Fucking hell. <sighs> Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, so um, it might make sense, for instance, to limit this to items with country United States. <sighs> Jesus. That's actually, I might want to tweet that as a wiki data fact because that is just. Incredible. Okay, now we have 50 results still, and the results end in September 2017. So if we just guess that it started in April, so that was half a year in 50 results, and it's been, what, three years since then. So we would expect some 300 results. So let's make a limit 400 and see how many we actually get, and it should still complete in time, I hope. Uh, no, just 190 results, actually. Okay, interesting. Uh, with the last one being dissolved in 31 December 2019, and that was a museum. A museum dedicated to news and journalism. Oh, that's a shame. That sounds like something you wouldn't want to have shut down. Um, yeah, though, of course, that's not going to be federal agencies, so let's... Is, is there anything that can be said, instance of federal agency or something? Uh, so let's start with, uh, we don't need the Trump presidency start. Uh, we need item, item, label, and the time. Um, and see where that gets us. Oh, that was rather fast. Oh, a national park and a national ni reserve. Yeah, that's the kind of things I would be interested in for that query, yeah. Um, so, a national park of the United States. Um, it's a member of something, it was operated by the National Park Service, that might actually be a thing. If it has a .gov domain in the official website, we could say it's government affiliated, so that's kind of tricky to check for, I guess. Um, National Park of the United States is, um... The National Park Service is a United States federal agency. So we could search for things, and the item should be an instance of, or a sub, any number of subclasses of a United States federal agency, and it could also have been operated by one of those. So that's the question mark making that optional. Uh, Yeah, the order doesn't really matter, I think. There we go, three results, okay. Uh, the University of Farmington. Farmington sounds like an interesting name. Uh, I see. A fake university that was an undercover operation. Oh, uh, I should zoom in here so you can see it, I guess. Uh, I hope that's readable. Uh, operated by... Oh, fucking hell. Fuck off! Oh. Jesus Christ. Maybe it's time for a change of subject. Uh, and let's uh, do one more thing. Let's just say this can be connected with any property to um, a United States federal agency or something. And see if that gets us a bit more. Uh, We're starting grim today. I uh, see some things are happening in the chat. I'm uh, going to look at that in a second, because that looks like it might be some uh, nicer subjects than a fake university set up to catch students and probably put them in concentration camps at the border or whatever. Uh, okay, so this is now taking much longer, because the optimizer is probably being stupid or something. Um, 
The University of Farmington was a fake university set up in 2015 in Michigan by the ICE to expose students visa fraud in the United States. Codename Paper Chase. 600 individuals. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we reached a timeout. Um, if I think if I reorder this a bit and say this is range safe and then uh, insert this again item and then I think uh, if I disable the optimizer it might work or not yes it does great so well now we have the University of Farmington we have the Andrews Forest which I guess was not operated by but instead it was um, the authority was the United States Forest Service and this was abolished 2017. We have the California Coast Ranges Biosphere Reserve. Prologue, whatever that is. A journal, I see. And that is how connected? Oh, it was published by the Na National Archives and Records Administration from 1969 until December 2017. Um, so let's call this, I guess, federal affiliated things dissolved under the Trump administration and to do optionally include and so the query remains valid after Trump is yeeted out of office. Uh, and we can remove the limit because it's only like eight results. Um, and I think I might clean this up and actually publish it after the stream is over because it seems to work and the results look not exactly like what I imagined but broadly with a, n a lot of national parks and reserves and stuff which I hadn't really anticipated. Um, so let's ch scroll through the chat. Uh, idea for query, visualize streets in a city with different colors depending if they're named after male or female persons. I think I did that at some point. I don't remember where that was. Uh, was that here? I think it might have been here. Local K, Wikidata, workshop, not editing anything, just the page. Uh, there we go. Uh, there should be, yeah, there's some queries. Yes, exactly. Uh, streets in Berlin with the gender of the person they're named after and it's a query template so you can select other cities here and oh yeah this doesn't work at all if you're zoomed into the page um, so I'll just dump this link in the chat and then uh, the query can probably be put somewhere else as well oh it says chat pause due to scroll I hope that doesn't mean I'm not seeing anything anymore Uh, so there's that link. Uh, is it working now? No, it's still running. Oh. Um, there we go. So in Berlin, you have. Thank you go away. We have in red ones that aren't named after anyone, at least as far as Wikidata knows. We have blue uh, named after men, and in yellow we have named after women. And apparently, no streets are named after any other genders in Berlin. Uh, yeah, bit of an imbalance here. And it's not just streets, it's any, I think, thoroughfare is the name in English or something, and, but anything in traffic, I guess. So this is actually a public square and not a street. Um, scrolling down. Uh, discussion about Swedish communist parties, apparently several. <laughs> I don't know that much about that. Uh, Does it work for Brussels? Oh, yeah, and query templates. So query templates are a cool feature that's existed for ages. You put template equals and then some JSON here in a comment, which contains the name, including possibly in multiple languages. And then you describe which variables you have. For instance, in this case, city, and the template contains a city as a variable. And then you can also give a query here, which gives suggestions for this query. So if I 
open this up again, the template, edit visually, and drop down here. I get suggested other cities, and this the query which returns these results is the one in the query template here. So that's this, and the first value has to be named ID, I think. And in this case, I guess that is probably cities with a population, uh, well, ordered by the population. The top 100 cities by population is what that template suggests as a city. Uh, but I can also just type in and use the search. So Brussels, typing and uh, say, typing and speaking at the same time really doesn't work out. Sorry. There we go. Brussels. Um, let's see if that works. And oh, street lengths. Um, no idea if we have those at all. Uh, so in Brussels we have oh. One city, no, at least one named after a transgender male person. That's very cool. Uh, although there's this uh, proposal about um, abolishing this as a P21 value and instead having the separate property. I don't know what the actually, what the la status of that proposal is actually. Um, let's randomly open one of the streets that does have an associated person. So that's the Plus Saint Gudul Gudul Sintel Gudepelain. Goodle plane. I'm very sorry. I probably should just even try this. Uh, we have location, coordinate location, connects with, different from. I don't think we have a lot of lengths here. Line. Uh, let me scroll up to the original question. Visualize streets. Oh, you need. You want to actually show the street as a line network. Uh, that is going to be more difficult. So, yeah, I guess for that we would need this, uh, what's it called, Zofox, I think, query service. Zofox, this one, if it's still alive, it seems to be. I'll scroll in so you all can see anything. Um, so for that we would need, um, let's open the code of this query and remove the template stuff because we don't need that. Um, so we need select something where and then eventually well, we are going to have a call to the query service as a federated query and there we are going to select these streets, coordinates, image, eponym, eponym label, blah, blah, blah. And then we need um, somehow to go from the OSM street to have this attribute OSM Wikidata, I guess. I, I have no idea if this OSM is the right namespace or anything. This is just uh, drafting. Uh, and that would have to be then the street, and I guess we would select the OSM street and maybe also the eponym and eponym label, which is whoever it's named after, and get rid of the default view, I think. Um, but even then, there's still a map view of the Wikidata query service. I'm not sure if we can actually get the geometry of the OSM street. Uh, So I think at this point I need to look at some examples of Sofox. We have, uh, I think you can, yeah, you can see the, well, you can see bits of the query source code here and there, and then it scrolls out of view because I'm zoomed in. Uh, damn it. I think I just need to reset the zoom level, and I'm sorry if no one can read anything anymore now because it's all tiny. So this is... Um, when more than one relation links to the same Wikidata ID and the uh, the predicate is OSMT colon Wikidata, apparently. So we would need something like OSMT Wikidata and then go back to the examples. Uh, uh, where is Wikidata? Where and then what does actually what do these actually return in the end? They return, uh, ah, what's the pop-up doing? There we go. So the OSM ID uh, as this Wikidata thing, and then admin level, 
So, yeah, this might work. And here we can kill this street label. We don't need that. We can remove the image as well and the coordinates. We don't need all of those. Uh, let's keep the gender label, I guess. Um, yeah. Oh, and this is being formatted very weirdly. Let's fix that quickly. There we go. Uh, oh, this still has German in there. Yeah, okay, let's try this. I think I can zoom in again so you can all read it. Um, let's see if this works. We have 342 results. We have a lot of OSM ways and we have absolutely nothing else. Uh, I don't know why. But if I open this, I get what sounds like it could be a gel gallery in Brussels. So that is, yeah, that is promising. Oops, uh, can we show that in a... No, we can't show it in the map. We, ha we have A, whatever A is. Uh, we have dimensions. Okay, so I, I think I probably need another example. Hello, Lea. Um, very normal thing to write <laughs> in these times. So let's see if I can find out a SoFox query that shows things on a map. Uh, mismatching Wikipedia and Wikidata tags. That one has a default view map. And it has a lock. Ah. OSM M colon lock. So what is location? Is that going to be... Well, I can try it out. Um, OSM M lock lock and select that as well. Uh, okay, it's a bunch of points, which is I was hoping for line strings, but because point is what we already have uh, today, uh, uh, what we already had on the query service. Uh, yeah, that's th just the same thing. Um, oops. What else can we have on a map? Here the map is a location, which also comes from OSMM lock. Location from lock, 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 that's location meta tag, whatever that is. Uh, and this one, default view map regions, what's map regions? Uh, the great thing is, this one is scrolling out of view even at 100% zoom, so let me see if I can zoom out more. And if this is still readable, uh, it's definitely not readable for you after video compression, I assume. Uh, okay, so this just selects the ID itself, which, and the ID is, what is the ID? That's... Well, that's a Wikidata item. Okay, so that's not what we want. And here, it actually builds a average point itself. But there's line string. No. Uh, I can zoom in a bit more. Yeah. This one. No. no, I don't know if you can get anything other than points out of Zofox. Um, so, I'm not sure if this gets me anywhere else. I mean, I can... Uh, no. Well, we have here a list of the OSM IDs, and some of them are ways, and some of them are relations. And also, f for some reason, we still don't have the eponym and eponym label, and I do not know why. Um, what if I remove the label service and just say we're interested in the eponym and gender itself? Uh, does that work better? No. 
Why do we not get these? Oh, because it's optional and I guess it's possible that just none of them have it. Oh no, there it is. Okay, so I didn't need to change anything in the query at all. So if we go back to this and sort. Yeah, okay, a handful of them have uh, eponyms. Um, okay. So, yeah, but now I have a bunch of locations, but those are just points again. Uh, does Sofox have its own help page? It does. Does this help page describe how to show... Um, it has an overpass integration. Uh, I'm not... No, this is... The wrong way around, I think it sounds like. Uh, uh -huh. Aha! Um, zooming in, sorry. We can generate polygon files apparently if a query contains an ID field and each of its values is unique. Uh huh. And then I can show this with map shape or whatever this is. That's the def that's what the default view map regions is for. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, default view map regions, and see if that looks like anything. Uh, well, no, not exactly. Oh, error loading. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, does it tell me what kind of error? Possible cause include wrong URL, no network connection, server not configured for cross origin resource sharing. Or it might just be, no, what it said it had to be an ID field. So let's call this ID instead of OSM street. And also make absolutely sure they're distinct by saying we group by ID. And actually... Uh, yeah, we probably don't need anything else, actually. Let's just include... No, uh, let's just sample them all. Sample of eponym as eponym underscore. Sample, sam sample of eponym label as eponym label underscore. Sample of gender label as gender label underscore and sample of lock as lock underscore just in case I guess and now we have an ID field each of its values is unique so let's try that and map shaper is loading I assume nope error loading possible cause include wrong URL is there anything more in the console Type error underscore dot compact is undefined. Great. No, wait, that might be unrelated to this thing. Uh, let's just try again and see if it shows the error again. And if it doesn't, then it was unrelated. Mm. Nope, there's no error in the console this time, so it's probably topo JSON. There's a 500 internal server error there. Boom. Thank you. Very helpful error response. Okay, so this thing doesn't really work as well as I had hoped. Mm. Okay, I think this is about as far as my... SOFOX or OpenStreetMap knowledge goes. Um, so we can get the OSM IDs, but I can't figure out how to visualize them on a map nicely. So I will just copy this URL and dump it in the chat. And if anyone knows more, uh, you can look into that. But yeah, uh, so Maybe I should quickly talk about SoFox in general. So it's a query service that contains all the information from OpenStreetMap. I don't know how often it's updated. 
Um, and you can use that to query OpenStreetMap with the same Sparkle language that you also use for Wikidata. And sorry, it used to be the case that it also contained all the data from Wikidata in addition to the OpenStreetMap data. And eventually they got rid of that uh, because it was just too much data and couldn't fit in their server or something. So now if you want to access Wikidata, you have to use a federated query like this one. Uh, it used to be that you could have just done uh, this directly and it would have worked, but then eventually they had to uh, stop including all of the data in their data set, which is fair enough. But you can still get um, the wiki data through a federated query and then combine it with the uh, OpenStreetMap data and get some pretty interesting results through that. I just don't know, I don't use it very much and I don't know how to combine it uh, how to use it so that you actually get polygons, or in the case of strings, it would be more like uh, line strings, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's, I think, all I have for that. Uh, can you still do it without federation? Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, does this say anything else? No. Oh, OS M geometries are not imported. Okay, most objects have location, which is the center point, and ways have whether it's closed or not. Okay, so it's not in the data at all. So I guess if you want a map where these are actually lines, you will have to somehow export the results and then turn them into uh, another tool, probably Overpass. But I don't know Overpass at all, so that's definitely beyond uh, my expertise. So yeah, that's that query. Um, any other ideas or requests? Let me just go back through the chat if I missed anything important. Jeez, there's lots of people here. I think last query stream was like two people in the chat. Uh, okay, I don't think I missed any query suggestions. The rail network query, yes. Um, well, I don't really know what to do with that one. I haven't looked too much into it, but it looked pretty uh, mysterious why it did or didn't work. So the query gets um, for these three countries, which I think was India, was, let's just check, India, Pakistan, and uh, what's the third one, Bangladesh. It searches for all the railway stations in one of those three countries and then it does a uh, search through the graph starting at uh, Celda, Celda Junction Railway Station and traversing these, um, where does it say, there, traversing the adjacent station links um, to all the other stations and then uh, does some more things to actually uh, construct a line string literal that shows up on the map and the result looks like this. You have... Um, wait, where do these line string segments come from? Is that all... Oh yeah, that's intermediate railway stations. Then I'm not sure what the bigger dots are. But this is basically a hugely impressive map of all the railway data around there color-coded, I think, by how many stations it is from that starting station, which I guess must be uh, somewhere around here. Looks like it might be. Um, yeah, that's the one. Th so this, the brown ones are the ones you can reach in 10 stops and the red ones in up to 20 stops and so on. And um, the, the question was, I think, if I remember correctly, how to adapt that to other countries and that didn't always work well for some reason and uh, which other country has more or less complete railway information is I guess a question we would need for that. Uh, I think I was trying it with uh, Germany and let me just scroll back through my notifications. Uh, this screenshot was from somewhere in the UK probably. Uh, 
Did you have any specific uh, country in mind? Otherwise, I would try. I don't know. Let, let's try United United Kingdom. And I happen to know a train station in there is King's Cross. Uh, oh, it's without an epistrophe. Okay. But thank you, whoever put that alias in there for idiots like me. France. Okay. Sure. France. Q142. What's. Um, uh, Paris main <laughs> railway station. Does that exist? Uh, Gare du whatever. What's the main one? Gare du Nord? Sure. Let's try that one. Um, and I think those are the only country specific things in there. Although we might have a problem because this only includes. Oops. What? What did I do? Um, okay. It's back. Uh, I, I have no idea what that was. Uh, so this only includes direct instances of railway stations, so it might miss some items, but let's try that and see if that gets us anywhere. And if you don't mind, I'm just also going to reformat the query a little bit so it's easier for me to read. Uh, We go as stations where uh, include stations, and then, oops, hung up for a second. Service, and I'll continue with that later. Yeah, that looks decent. I guess the blue ones are some uh, direct TGV connections or something. Yeah, there we go. Um, there's some gaps there, where I'm not sure where they're coming from. I think I saw those when I tried it with Germany as well. Um, uh, let me just finish formatting this. Uh, that's all fine. And this service... Oops. Uh, looks like this. Uh, I'm not sure what these, if these brackets are necessary. I suspect they're not. So let me try that again. Um, what does this do? If the if the depth, which I think is the number of links followed, is exactly divisible by 10, then it binds the coordinates, otherwise nothing as coordinates. And then... Mm, okay. And then it gets from, I think, pred is meant to be the predecessor, I guess. Uh, but I should probably s look up the gas documentation uh, in the Blaze Graph wiki. So the thing I had in my browser history is the search for the gas page and not the real gas page. Oh. What? Did the old wiki shut down? Oh. They moved it to GitHub, but with proper redirects, apparently. Interesting. Um, does Do GitHub wik wikis have a search? Pages. Um, Gas. Uh, what was it? It was called the gather, gather something, uh, scatter service. Uh, okay, let's find this one. Gather apply scatter was the name, right. And uh, there's the match predicates and the BFS is the one. And the parameters are out is the vertex, out one is the depth of the vertex, and out two is the predecessor. Yeah, okay. So this is the vertex we found, the station itself. 
depth is how f how many links it's away from the start station and then the predecessor is the previous one um, uh, let's reformat this actually because it's the same subject as everything else and just move it around because I think it's a lot easier to understand if you think uh, it has start uh, predicate station and call this the predecessor because uh, there could also be a predicate um, oops uh, oh oh I am sorry I think I just pressed control Q by accident and you are now seeing uh, rubbish yeah I pressed control Q very sorry uh, let me just get my window back mm. Can you choose the colors? I don't remember. Let me check that afterwards. Um, does the screencast show the right window? No, it doesn't. Uh, it would be really great if I could set this up without you seeing my other browser window at the same time, but I guess I can't. So this is the one I want to oops, remove. There we go. So now you s should see the right thing again. Uh, right, and any changes I made got lost. Great. Um, I was moving this up and calling this the predecessor. Not the predecessor. And what I wanted to press was Control F, not Control Q, to search for any other preds I had missed. Um, there's one at the top. No. There's another match, but I don't can't find it. Is it somewhere on the right here? No. Okay. Well. Um. Let's Okay. Okay, the reason that chords exists if Oh so that's why I was only seeing some of the points there. So the points are the ones that are returned by each uh, so that those are the ones at the depth ten part. So uh, here, for instance, the point is one that is returned by um, this check where chords is bound, I guess. And then in between, we still have a line string, for instance, here. Um, but there's no separate item re being returned there or no chords or something. Okay, is that what it's for? That makes sense, I see. Okay. Um... And the question was whether something in return in stations can be used as a starting point in the service gas service block. That should be possible, I'm not sure. Um, do you have anything specific in mind? Like you would have one value and a set of stations for it or something? I'm not sure. And let's look into the colors. Um, I think you can have... Uh, let me just try that in a brand new query where we have just hard-coded bind uh, point zero zero bkt geo literal as chords. I think that's the right syntax. And bind zero 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 f f uh as r g b and um default view w k t geo literal no i th i think it's geo w k t literal was that it and also the default view should be a map yes 
There we go. Yes, and that looks very much like a blue. And if I change this to FF, then it should become a red point. Yes, it does. Great. And now it would be red, green, so this is kind of orange. Yes, nice. Okay. So if you bind a variable named RGB, and I think it's case sensitive, so all underscore, and it's exactly in this uh, hexadecimal notation, uh, six digit in total, two red, two green, two blue, then that is used as a color for the map view and for other things. Um, one thing is that would get incons if that gets inconsistent with the layers, it gets a bit more tricky. I'm not sure how those interact, but in theory that's an option. The thing is just that this is... Um, sorry, I looked over at the chat and got distracted. Uh, the issue is that you have to use an RGB color here. There's no other options. At least we haven't implemented any other options yet. And uh, Sparkle is, as I remember, pretty lacking in, I think specifically, there's no way to convert to and from hexadecimal. Uh, so you can do all the math you want on the numbers, but at the end you have to convert it into this hexadecimal literal, and that's the thing I think I got stuck on. Because I wanted to do something like that for my map of the results of the last German federal election, coloring each electoral district by the party who won it and make the colors stronger or weaker uh, depending on how many percent of the seats they got and I couldn't find a way to do that uh, dynamically so in the end I ended up hard coding the party colors and like two grades of um, fading them out or something because there was no way to convert those numbers to and from hexadecimal, if I remember correctly. Um, so building a gradient from that is going to be uh, more difficult, I think. Unless, I mean, what you can do is something like uh, bind, let's just arbitrarily say this as the value, which and pretend it could be in the range 0 to 1, and you could bind if value less than 0 0.1, then you bind 0, 0. Otherwise, if value less than 1.3, if value less than 1.5, if value less than 3.8, whatever. Um, and otherwise, FF, 1, 2, 3, 4, closing parentheses, as red and then what you bind is the concatenation of red and 0000, zero, zero, zero um, as RGB and actually let's say for values oh it doesn't make sense um, yeah sure uh, values the value can be 0 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 and bind the point as being a st string data type of concat of point then the value and then we concatenate the rest of this that's the concat and the Ty type is this one, and we bind the whole thing as coordinates. Yep, there we go. And now we have a very rudimentary gradient. If I and I, if I wasn't so lazy in typing this live, I could add more layers here. So you can step through the RGB space like this. You cannot step through the HSV or HSL or any other co color space like this as easily, I think. Because here I'm just generating already hexadecimal uh, numbers, which I then just concatenate into the whole thing. And if I had to do any other calculations, like if I wanted to step through the hue space and then in the end convert that to RGB, I would have to in the end... So I could probably it's probably possible to do those conversion formulas in Sparkle, I'm not sure. 
if there's a sign in the formula or something, then we're out of luck, but it might be possible. But then you have to convert that to hexadecimal, and that's the part that's not possible in Sparkle, as far as I'm aware. But stepping through RGB like this would be an option. And also, if you were actually doing this, you would want to use a map view where you hide, for instance, the RGB, and let's also say we hide the red. Well, you wouldn't even select the red. Um, let's just select the chords and the RGB, but hide the RGB in the map view, and now in the pop-up here, you have just the point. And if we had anything else in the result, we would actually hide the point as well. And for example, you wouldn't show the coordinates to someone who was viewing the query result, you would only show them the associated item or something. With this uh, hide thing in some JSON after the default view, you can say, I would like to include these variables in the result, for instance, because RGB influences what we see here, but then I would like to not show that in the map pop-ups. Um, I can share a link to this query. Um, uh, query trick to build a gradient in RGB space. Uh, is fixing users broken queries a part of the stream? It could be, yeah. Sure, share the query and then I can uh, try to look into it. I could also check if there's anything on the um, request a query page, but that's usually already responded to pretty quickly and I don't look at it nice enough, uh, often enough. Okay, uh, copy link location, there we go. So we have item label, file name. Oh, this is, gen this is generating some wiki text, huh? Uh, it looks for humans. <laughs> Sorry, I find it hilarious that Q5 is the item that deserves a comment and this one doesn't. Uh, someone with uh, occupation, I guess. Yeah, occupation musician who has a number of site links. And we filter for more than 50 site links, so we're interested in famous humans, I guess. They can have an item, they can have images. Uh, they can have an image, sorry. Of course, they have an item. Uh, labels in Swedish. Uh, I don't know what these languages are. Danish. I guess, I think this is Norwegian Nynorsk or something, and this is probably the other Norwegian language that I don't remember right now, sorry. Um, replace, ah, okay. In the URI, you replace the special file path with just file, and then you have the file name, oh, I see. And you don't want anything that has a Swedish Wikipedia article, this should probably be named to WSE, but eh. And then the item should not be one of these hard-coded ones. Sandboxes, test pages. Oh, I see. Uh, I'm not sure how this guy fits in there, but okay. And then order by a number of links. And it's Sami. Oh, I'm sorry. And Bokma was the other one. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. Okay, I'm very sorry. Uh, and it has duplicates. Okay. So let's run the query first um, and see what comes out of that. That was the sound of me drinking, if you could hear that. I'm sorry. Um, Benjamin Franklin. Uh huh. Okay, and it has duplicates because... Uh, can we see any of them? Uh, Betty Davis, for instance, because they have um, three files, so that should probably be... That's a file name, Jesus. Um, okay, so what we want is not distinct items, but we want instead... Um, where does group by come? I think before order. Group by the item label. And then, um, I'm not sure where the sample comes in. Let's try it here and do the concat outside. Um, oh, and the link count we're going to have to 
um, max link count. It probably doesn't actually matter, but I think we have to use an aggregate function here. I'm not sure if this works, actually. Okay, it doesn't complain about bad aggregates, so I guess it's working. So let's sort again, and Betty Davis only has one image now. Yep. And you're, of course, free to go on wiki and argue if items should have multiple images, because I'm not sure what the status of that discussion is. I just remember it's being a contentious issue since like 2014 or something. Uh, but yeah, so um, let's just while we're at it call this WSE uh, because it's searching for Wikipedia and call this um, Occupation Musician and I think that's about it. Run that again just to make sure. Is that a still nightmare? Okay, thought so. And then I can paste that back in chat. Uh, yeah. Okay. So hopefully that's working better now. Uh, any other queries that need to be fixed? Okay, the query service is unsure about when it was last updated. Um, was there something else in chat that I missed? No. I guess I can go through the request. I, I really can't type while I speak, Jesus. Uh, request a query page and see if I missed anything. Nothing's been archived all month yet. Oh. Okay. Um. Tricks to avoid timeout. Uh, that's a nice and simple question. Uh, I don't know. Avoid the query service and then when everything else works, try to add it back in. Uh, there are some query hints you can use, like even in this one, the hint range safe. Um, which you can put after anything that outputs a number, like in this case, or I think, uh, yeah, point in time as well, um, which can help basic, uh, if you're filtering on that, which in this case happens. Uh, so apparently, so in Sparkle in general, uh, you can have types of any value under a predicate. So under Wikibase site links, there could be mixed um, the values could, as, as far as Sparkle and RDF is concerned, the values could be items, could be strings, could be numbers, could be decimal, integer, float, double numbers. Um, and so by default, uh, anything that compares values like this uh, greater than 50 has to take all of these variants into account. And when you use the range safe hint, you basically tell the query engine, we're not doing anything like that. We're not mixing different types within uh, one predicate, such as Wikibase site links, everything here is going to be the same type, and that makes this uh, filter here a lot more efficient. So if you're using a filter, then it can often also help to use this uh, range safe hint, which I think in Wikidata is pretty much always true, unless you have some property like um, mass or weight, and there can also be unknown values, then those might violate th that assumption, I'm not sure. But this can help if you have anything to sort. It also helps with uh, date and time values, if I remember, which you can compare with something like greater than 1950 XSD date time, which is the syntax for saying that this is literal with uh, this data type. Uh, other tricks to optimize queries. Um, you can sometimes extract queries, uh, parts of the query, into a named subquery like uh, this one here, and then it will definitely only get run once, and the optimizer won't do anything weird with it, which can help. Um, not sure what else. I think I had, there should be on commons, I think, even some PDF. No, wait, I, that's on Wikidata. Wiki Wikidata query optimization, that one. That's why I wrote some, th some of those things down, I think. Yeah, and I also added this um, image. 
which is just a symbolic representation of what it feels like to optimize queries. Uh, let me just add that link as well. I think I originally added um, some of the things I added at the bottom then, and then whoever was editing the page before that, I think James Heald or something, just said, uh, no, let's move that to the top and move whatever was there before from 2015 or so um, to the bottom. So there's probably still th some things here, like, yeah, as of September 2015, yeah. But there's also some more uh, up-to-date information on this page, which can be useful. Uh, yeah, let's go through this a bit. Uh, thousands separated in quantitative values. Um, uh, I would need an example for that. That's definitely possible, but I would say that should be... There should be some part of the function, I think, that performance numbers, right? And then I would apply that on the Listeria end. Um, but I would need to try that out on some sandbox page, I guess. It's a bit unfortunate there's no example here. Um, but actually, let me first check. Parser function. Uh, this is the overview page, and I'm actually interested in this one. Zoom in. Um, is there anything formatting? Format num, exactly. So format num produces, yeah, exactly. So I think I'll just leave a reply there. Thomas Vivlaren. I think the best way to do that would be to apply the uh, format num parser function on the wiki end. Okay. Um, one. And copy that. Mm, I think Listeria has options for that. You have a particular page in mind where I try it out. Um. And that's I didn't typo the name. No, that's my phone. Uh, suggest format num. And then I will need to check my notifications later. There's an example listeria there. Does that also have numbers? Pandemie. Oh. Can I guess what this means? Or maybe not. No, no, it does mean that, according to the side things. Okay. Um, and that actually has numbers, yeah. So let me just redigere the wiki text. Thank you. I want to edit the wiki text and copy the Listeria thing to my Sandlauder. It's probably a terrible pronunciation. And wiki data list absolute. I guess that's like German Abschluss. Um, and then there has to be something, uh, I should zoom in so you can see everything. Um, template, Wikidata list, something to wrap the cells in. Uh, Parent is columns, sort, section, in section, auto list, um, row template. Yeah, I think you can definitely do it with row template. Um, but that's going to be a bit more complicated. Yeah, but it looks like um, that's what 
we need. So I guess I would create a sub page of my sandbox for uh, a custom row template and then try that. So uh, row template in the URL. And the columns it gets are um, these. So we generate a table row like. What does a table row look like? Uh, okay, I'm confused. Does this already use? Okay, so it looks like it's just um, something like a label and no. No, I have no idea how row templates work. I haven't tried those before. Th that looks like. That wiki text confuses me. Uh, so this the oh it adds a separate class. Okay, so this this whole block is one row. So I would need to copy that. And I have no idea what this class is, but I'm going to assume I can uh, skip it. So this would probably be the. Does it pass an ID into the row template? No. Then let's just remove this class. And the cla the label is label. Uh, wait, with three records. And it can be gone by default. This is the P five eighty. This is the P five A two. This is the P one one two zero. This is the P one six zero three. P eight two eight. This is the P one four seven eight. P four nine five. And P one eight four six. Um, I don't see all of those numbers here, but I will just try that. And now the numbers that we need to wrap are, for instance, this one, one one two zero. So that would be form format num like this. First attempt. Uh, yes, CC bias A is fine by me. I have been automatically identified as something, and if I think it was constructive, I should contact an administrator and explain probably what I tried to do. And the abuse filter rule has been described as hyphen, which I'm going to deliberately designate as fuck you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So that's my experiment on this wiki, I guess. Um, because I'm running into some abuse filter and have no idea what to do about it. Let me just copy that and at least um, do use lang equals en so that I get the error message in English. Uh, Yes, thank you for recovering my unsafe changes. Okay, this is not going to be translated, obviously. Uh, save, initial attempt. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Can you describe your abuse filter rules better, please? Uh, though I would still have to translate it, of course. Okay, so, yeah, I'm running into some abuse filter, and presumably this is trying to tell me 
what it is. I don't know, maybe I'm not allowed to edit outside of my own sandbox, but I need the sandbox because I need some role template. Uh, so I guess I'll try it on Wikidata. Uh, this should work there as well after all. Uh, do we have sandbox links? No, we don't. Those are useful, we should add those. Sandbox. Oh, it even exists already. Um, let's try that, and this is of course Wikidata list, and this is, I think it's called Wikidata list end. List of pandemics, leave everything as it is, and then create um, template, row template, and copy all this into here. Attempt the main sandbox for context. And then say that the um, how do you specify it? Row underscore template is is user tweets, facts, and queries, sandbox row template. Let's try this. Well, preview. Yeah, the preview is going to help. Initial at initial attempt to format numbers in template Wikidata list and manually update the list. Status OK. Oh! It worked? Really? Wow. And it even... How? How did the reference survive? So does it... What? What is the reference doing there? So is the reference being part of the call into format num, but format num just doesn't care? Uh, wait, but there's no... I don't even see any... Oh, right, no, because I see the sandbox invocation. So, where does the reference... Yeah. So, it passes the whole reference into P1120, and then the row template passes that, the number including the reference, into format num, and I guess format num is being very nice, and formats the number part, and then still includes the reference after that, so that it all just magically works out. It's amazing. Okay. Okay, so I guess that's how it can be done. I I'm still amazed. <laughs> this just uh, just works. Okay, so I guess I can actually leave a reply here. Let's first reload. No, I didn't miss anything. So, reply to this username. I tried it out at um, this thing. Uh, it looks like the trick is to use a custom row template such as the one at here, which is based on the usual heat generated rows, um, but wraps the, this one was it, right? Code argument in OVKey format num. Based on, and this is based on uh, VSV pandemie, pandemie, I don't know, and it was the section lister over this one. Uh, 
and oops, I forgot to sign. And this works. Which is based on uh, which is based on the wiki text usually that uh, this area generates by default. Um, yeah. Custom row template works. Okay. And I think that is the best approach because then MediaWiki can um, know for itself how numbers should be formatted. And actually I could should be able to try that out here, right? Because it's a multilingual wiki, so if I use use lang equals de, for instance, it should use a dot or not as the thousand separator. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. And in Swedish, what was it? Was Swedish sv or se? Let's try sv. No, I think uh, yeah. I would have to mark the lang this page as being in uh, another content language to have this uh, take any effect, I guess. Unless the format num has um, a parameter to set the locale. Uh, does it? Whatever this capital R means, R is reverse the behavior. Okay, no. No, okay. So I think this just doesn't uh, work the way I wanted it to. Uh, I got a notification for some reason. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you can set the content language directly. I think that requires using the translate extension, right? And then it would work in different uh, sub pages. Then the number formatting might look different, but I don't want to try that now. Or can I set the content language anyway? No, not the language code of the whole wiki. Page content language, that's the one. Uh, English for CSS, an A space. Um, extensions can change that. The translate extension uses it. Special page language. Oh. And permission needs to be set. Let's see if I have permission to set that. I don't know. No, I don't. Administrators can do that. Okay, no, that's enough. Um, but I assume that format num does the right thing and I don't need to try it out now. I don't need an administrator for that even though I think I have some <laughs> in the audience right now. Uh, just never mind. Okay. Um, any other questions? Well, I can just keep scrolling through the uh, request of query, I guess. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, then just uh, post them there, and that might be more useful, because whatever I explain here is obviously not going to be useful to the people who just read this page. So. Any update on the max lag problem? Um, not as far as I know. Uh, since the last update that was sent to the mailing list, a work on this new updater, which is hopefully going to be uh, make everything better, basically, uh, is still ongoing. I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, it's possible to get the average page views. Um, shouldn't that be possible? Supported services, generator, search, fabricator task, at, oh, no, 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 not that task, no. Uh, but that should be possible. Uh, not efficiently, but it should be possible. Um, we would need to get uh, first API sandbox on, sure, English Wikipedia. Uh, zoom in. 
So um, what we need is a generator and we can use the all pages generator as a trick and tell it we want to start at the page for, I don't know, coronavirus. And enumerate the article namespace, that's fine. Um, limit it to exactly one article. So that generates us this exactly one page. And then we want for that the prop page views. I'm not sure if that's actually the right data, is it? Oh, that looks... No. No, 600,000 isn't enough, right? Surely. Page views API. D does that give us the right information or not? Uh. Page view. Because I'm not sure. I, I feel like uh, I think there's some issues going on with if people see a cached version of the article, then the count as visible in MediaWiki might not get updated or something. I feel like um, let's just check the page views tool. Is that just page views? Let's just try it. Okay, sure. Um, coronavirus. How many page views does this report? Some 700,000, 600,000. Okay, no, that's the same number we got in the API sandbox. So I guess this gives us the right information after all, which is great because it means... Um, can we also configure this further? Uh, oh yeah, they wrote something, right? The average page views in the last page views days. So let's say, I don't know, in the last one day. Let's keep it simple for now. And the metric is the page views. Okay, there's only one metric anyways. Um, yeah. So that should be possible in the query service. Uh, we just need to copy uh, some MW API stuff first uh, from the examples, I think. This whole block, basically. Um, select anywhere, and I'll clean that up later. Paste uh, with Shift Tab reindent everything. Uh, the API we want is the g generator API, and we want to run against enwikipedia.org. And we're not searching anything. We are using the generator um, all pages. And we can also simplify this a lot, by the way, um, which I keep meaning to apply to those examples as well, because I think it's so much more readable this way, if you don't repeat the BV service param all the time. Um, we're not interested in language. Uh, so g all pages, um, what was it? GAP from, we need to set to um, coronavirus. Let's just keep testing with this one. GAP limit is one. Is there anything else we specify? Nope. And then we set um, prop, uh, no, MW API prop is page views. And there I set PVIP days one, days one. And now is the tricky part. We need to write XPath to get the result out of there, and I'm not an XPath expert at all. But let's first switch this to format, where is it, format XML, because that's what the query service actually uses for MW API. So it gets all the way to here, and then I think, um, oh right, because it didn't have, oh wait, Hang on. Okay, there we go. So for yesterday, we don't have any page views yet. But for the day before, we have. Okay, so let's set the PVIP days to 2. And if I can type the number 2 correctly, it will work even better. And then we need the page views, Wikibase API output. 
And then I think we put some kind of X path there. Uh, is there an example here anywhere? There. Well, not much. Okay, string literal. And I think if I remember X path correctly, at means the ns attribute of the page exactly. So the X path kind of starts out here, and then we need, I think, page views slash pvip and then we would want the the content of that i'm not sure what that is let's try a star ooh a timeout but after less than 60 seconds which is strange uh yeah it, in mw api some kind of timeout happened. Did I do something wrong? Did I forget some parameter? Um, copy this whole thing and just check it here for comparison. Uh, action equals query is and format equal XML. That's done by MW API. Prop page views we have. Generator all pages we have. PVIP days 2 we have. GAP from equals coronavirus we have, and GAP limit equals one we also have. Okay, so we should have all the API parameters. Mm. I don't know, let's keep it simple for now and do ns wikibase api output at ns, just like in the example. See if that works. Mm. Nope. Uh, continuation. How do you? F how do we limit the continuation? This is the one I was looking for. We are not interested in any kind of continuation. Let's see if this works. No. Damn it. Uh. Oh right. I think. Um. What was it? The info page props prop we want by default, right? Now it works. Okay, now we get the NS, which is zero in both cases. Um, and we can try to get the page views. Uh, it's unbound. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is basically my nightmare. Um, X path. I think so far I've had some moderate success with just muddling myself through the examples here. Slash A, slash B, slash C. That selects the elements. How do I select um, the content? That's the attribute. It's parent, self, uh, predicates. Um, let's try a slash at the beginning there. Uh, at date. Aha! Okay, so page views, page view IP, whatever that means. Um, and at date gives us the date attribute here. So that means we've successfully found this node at least. And now we need to get what we want is the at date and the um, text content of that. How does one get the text content in XPath? At names, slash editions, slash text. Uh, like a function call, apparently. Um, let's actually just copy this. Text uh, page views and call this date. And we can get rid of this. Does this work? And more importantly, will those two be correctly connected? Uh, not exactly. Sorry. Where does that one come from? Um, let's raise this limit a little bit and see what happens. Not much. If we disable this, do we get more? 
No, then we get a timeout again. Damn it. Um, with this, we just get the page views for. We probably need something that says all of them. Um, is it here a slash, a double slash? Is that it? No, now it's a timeout again. It's a timeout in NWAPI something. Okay, let's ditch the date and just get the number. Oh, there we go. Well, no, not quite. Um, because that's still... Oh, why is that a timeout again now? 1500 milliseconds elapsed. That, that was like after a second. Okay, I'm confused. But anyways, this is not giving us a number of texts. It's just giving us one text for some reason. So I guess one thing we might need is to put a limit on the page views no mm. Mm. and filter page views not one Make this uh, come on. What are those timeouts? There we go. Now it works again. I think with PVIP days one it gives us a wrong result, and with two it kind of works. Oops, uh, two not twelve. Yeah, okay. So that gives us some page views. Um, I have just no idea if it's even possible to go through multiple of these and preserve the association with the date and the number in any way. Uh, I don't know that about the MW API thing of the career service, and I don't know that about XPath either. Um, but uh, you can definitely get some kind of uh, page views by abusing this all pages generator to generate exactly one page with, uh, for instance, this title in this case. Um, that's an option. And then you can get for that one generated page any prop you want. In this case, that's the page views. And actually, I think I can now remove the info and page props again, right? Yeah, I can. Okay. Because I'm not asking for them in the output anymore. Uh, oh, I can also um, reformat this and probably put it here. I think it makes more sense in this order. Yeah, okay. And I think, call that page views. And I think that's something I can post on the request a query page. Um, reply to, oh, first one's unsigned, come on. Page views of a given that came from an IP. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess I'll just reply to those two named users. You can get some page data. Um. You can uh, use the all page.
pages. Does that have? Yep, it has documentation. So, yeah, the key is special. I have language. All pages generator to generate exactly one page. Uh, from gleich title. And then specify custom props to get whatever information you want from the result, including pa page views, as long as you can write the right X path to extract the number out of the full result. Sparkle query equals, where is it? Here. Unfortunately, this only gives you one page views number for the previous day, I believe. I have couldn't figure out how to get more results with a higher days parameter. It always just seems to return the first one. Mm. Oh, and this is not working at all because that has to be MW, I guess, not MediaWiki. Yep, that works to generate exactly one page. From the result for that page. Yeah, reply. to generate a page and then prop that page views for page view data. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. This is a uh, something. Items with more than 30 side things that have an article in English but not in, I think that's Greek Wikipedia. Um, yeah, that's going to be very tricky. And yeah, you don't want categories and so far. Yeah, that's difficult because we don't have the namespaces of the site links. Mm. No, I don't have any bright ideas for that. If anyone else has um, questions, by the way, feel free to post those instead of me going through uh, this page. Uh, this already has a lot of responses. This looks okay. This has a response. Uh, this as well. I'm not sure why all of these aren't getting archived. 8 March, that was uh, exactly a week ago. Not sure what kind of uh, limit is set here. Oh. Um, I think it's not very useful to go through the rest of these. They've probably been answered already. Um, the other option would be to go through the query examples and try to um, clean them up a little bit and see if there's anything there that can be written better nowadays. 
Um, it's of course a very large page. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Uh, there we go. We have cats, we have goats, right. Should we remove goats? What's the extra value of having these two queries which are almost exactly the same except one is goatified? Uh, I'm not going to do that today. Horses. Okay, someone at some point renamed at least the variable names into English. I remember those used to be French as well. Comments are still there. Uh, cats with pictures. Map of hospitals, number of humans. Oh, does this still work? It probably does, yeah. That should be an easy count. Uh, or not. Uh. Humans without children. Uh-huh. So the thing is, those are not actually quite quite equivalent, those two queries. So there's humans without children, and the simplest one says the human is has this class WB, WD no P40, and the equivalent one has that on the statement instead, and I think... There is a slight difference there, if I'm not mistaken, which is that if the human has a children no value statement, but that is not a best rank statement, for instance, it's deprecated, or there is its normal rank and there's a preferred rank other statement for children, then I think the second query is going to find that human because it searches for any statement uh, with child no value. But the first query is not going to find that human, I think, because the equivalent link on the whole human is, I think, only added if there is a best a best rank statement uh, with no value. Just like for with WDT, you don't get all the statements, you get the best rank ones. For example, the uh, current mayor. Yeah, the truthy thing. I think that difference also applies to no value being on the whole item versus being on the statement. So I think these two are not quite equivalent, but I have not tried it out. And this actually took a long time. Wow, six and a half million humans. Um, question is, is it worth explaining this difference here? Because it is pretty uh, in-depth and this is still at the top of the query. So I think I almost want to leave that. What is this? It's just atrocious formatting, seriously. Uh, I just want to run all, all of these through a formatter, kind of. Um, and also... This, I guess. Um, URLs of Wikipedia in all languages. So this searches for the... Oh, no, we can improve this one. That's great. Okay, we're improving this one. So this searches for Wikipedias by searching for wikipedia.org slash wiki in the domain, and it does it with regex, even though it doesn't use any regex features, and blah, blah, blah. And what we can do instead, so this is 285. And what we can also do is wikipedia schema, uh, no, wiki, and what was it? WD wiki. No, wiki base, wiki, wiki group. Yes, that's what I meant. Wikipedia. Uh, no. What was it? RDF dump format. We have that information somewhere. The wiki group. Okay, it should be in there. Oh, I guess this is the site links. And actually, what I what I'm doing now is might as well remove the site links completely uh, and just do this. And now we have 507 Wikipedias instead. And yeah, so um, this returns 507 results, which is a lot more than this, because this only searches site links of Wikipedia. 
and this returns 285 and it re links to each of their main pages it looks like So what to do with this query? Because for a start, an alternative to scraping the wikipedia.org portal page and various lists, tables of wikipedias that are out there, what you want is the site matrix API, I'm pretty sure. That's um, API sandbox on Wikidata. I think it's action site matrix. Yeah. And we want... Um, was there something where we can filter for the group? No. But that also gives you all the wikis and that gives you the Wikipedia's, uh, basically the code or the group or something. So that is the API you want to use, I think, and not the Wikidata query service at all. Um, but yeah, so this is um, site links of the Wikipedia item, which look like a Wikipedia, because I guess Wikisource or Wikiquote has quotations about Wikipedia and blah blah blah. And this instead is all the Wikipedias that can be used in site links at all, which is 507 of them. We could also do something like, instead of this filter, we say that the site link is... No, we say that the... No, the site link is schema is part of a wiki and then this wiki should have wiki group wikipedia and that should give us the same 285 yes but that's a bit more robust than a regex filter and it's probably also faster 300 milliseconds versus nah doesn't make a difference that's not statistically significant okay but this so now we have just the Wikipedias which are linked to the Wikipedia item. And I guess actually, what was it? Essential articles Wikipedia? There's this list of Wikipedia articles that every Wikipedia should have, right? Um, what was it? Essential articles. Can I find that? Vital articles, okay. Because I'm pretty sure Wikipedia does not consider itself to be a vital article, right? Um, which means the expectation that every Wikipedia is going to have a site link on the Wikipedia item is already flawed, I think. Um, so, but I'm a bit hesitant to replace this query because this replacement query is so simple. Like, it's one triple. If I format it a bit differently, then there you go. Yeah, list of articles every Wikipedia th should have, thanks. Uh, let's see if Wikipedia is on that list, uh, because I suspect it isn't. Well, it, it's mentioned in the list, of course. Um, no, no, Wikipedia is not an article every Wikipedia should have, so... Yeah, the site links of the Wikipedia item is not going to give you what you want. So, do do the viewers agree if I replace that query with this one? Which doesn't really demonstrate how to handle site links anymore. Um, but it does a much better thing, I would say. Um, do we have anything else that still uses site links? Site link. Uh, we have a whole section. Items with a wiki species site link, for instance. Oh yeah, and I think this was already earlier, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm fine with removing this, and it will not demonstrate site link handling anymore in that case, but it will be the better result for URLs of Wikipedia in all languages. Um, with the side effect... No, wait, actually... No, this one with the side effect that it now gives you the root domain path and not uh, the slash wiki slash uh, main page thing uh, though the yeah okay so let's go to this page and see where i can edit it 
and someone seems to have added no edit link to the page so that I'm not allowed to edit it and it doesn't tell me what the section number is. Meh. Well, I guess scroll up. Why? Is, th is there a reason why we do not have section edit links on this gigantic page? Because that seems obnoxious to me. <laughs> it's here. I assume it's there for a reason. Maybe I'll go dig through the page history and add a comment there. Um, where is it? There we go. Uh, and we can ditch the prefix schema as well. So everything we need should be this. And I w I'm just also going to add a hint here. Um, APIs site map. Oh, okay. Mm. The special my language API. Oops. Side metrics. No. Um. Jesus is t slow to type here. Is another alternative. Because I f think it's worth mentioning this here if anyone's actually using this for a list of all Wikipedias. Um, yeah. And the section is. Oh! Is it because of the translate tags in the headings that we have this no edit section? Does that break stuff? Uh, maybe. Um, anyways, use Wikibase, Wikigroup, triples, yields. How many results was it? 506 rather than the. 285 from the Q hide links. Not every Wikipedia has an article about Wikipedia. And that's not a minor edit. I'm not going to show preview because that will just take ages. Let's try to just publish the changes. There's another question in chat. I have a long query that does not give the exact correct data with some fault values like the top values in the line chart. Uh, let me see. And this was saved now, I hope. Yep, there we go. And this link works inside Matrix API. Ah, damn it. Okay, I need to fix that, sorry. Would have been a good idea to use the preview after all, even if it takes ages. Um, da -da -da. So, my language colon should lead me to the mistake right away. There we go. And that needs to be a slash fix link. Oops, sorry. And there's the long URL. Uh, paste it here. Okay, so um, let's run it and see what it does. Country is a uh, country. It has a population statement with a value and a point in time. And then optionally it can have a determination method country can have uh, oh that can be simplified a bit but I hope that's optimized anyways okay and then oh it gets the population via various methods okay 
that's a cute trick. It's probably one of the shortest ways to write um, an unbound variable, I guess. And the top values of the line chart are wrong. Oh, something dipped down here. What was that? Pakistan? That seems suspicious. Mm. Okay, I don't yet see the obvious problem with this, or what would be wrong with it. Um, population of 1.4 and 1.2 billion for India and China is plausible, as far as I remember. And then we have the United States here, 0 0.3 billion, 300 million, 200 million. I think those numbers are more or less correct, as far as I remember. Um, Pakistan is very weird with that dip down there. I don't think that's plausible over just one year. Um, and then coming back up. So let's see what the table says about that. In 25, 2010. Oh, that looks like someone transcribed the number incorrectly. And there's two digits missing at the end or something like that. Um, let's just check that actually. Uh, while I wait for Armstrong Light to come back with um, what's wrong so I can try to improve it because I don't see the problem right now. And look at the population here. For, uh, okay, it's being slowing down the browser. Uh, it was in 2010, right? Yep, there we go. And, uh, okay, that's not a great reference. The World Bank Database. Data.worldbank.org. Um, Pakistan. I would like to have the population total. Um, as in, can I edit it here or something? In exactly 2010, it was, it is listed as, oh, can you please just let me copy a number? Um, in 2010, okay, down here we have the numbers for 2010, Pakistan, oh, there we go. That's the number, 179 million. That's actually a different number than it says here, and a higher number than it says for the next year. Uh, uh, do I want to edit that and then the data will be inconsistent? Because all the other statements, so 176 million for the next year, but if I drag this out, oh. I need to drag this out first. And then we have in 2000 and it doesn't refresh anything. How does one use this website? <laughs> Should I just download a CSV? And by CSV they mean a zip file? And that's not Pakistan, but all countries? No, okay. Uh, no, no. I am going to leave a comment on the talk page. Is there a wiki project Pakistan? No, there is not. So no one's going to see this. Uh, can I find out who imported this population even? Um, Population. Yeah, I'm down a rabbit hole now. 
I think as I'm going to wrap up pretty soon anyways, I think I've been going for around two hours. I need to go to the bathroom. Um, so I'm probably not starting anything new anyway, so I might as well try to clean that up. Okay, it's more than 500 edits away, then I will leave a comment here on the talk page section population the value population value of 4 2010 uh, what I can do actually is link to that particular statement um, using DevTools using this Um, thank you. Looks like the last two digits are missing, I assume. Um, Pakistan did n not lose a um, hundred million citizens during that one. I try to check the given source, the World Bank database, copy the item ID, but that now shows different numbers for several times, uh, for years in around that time, so I don't want to date just. up for um, looking into this this link work? Let's just quickly check it. Uh, now that shows... Population, new section, and that's probably not going to be seen ever because it's an item discussion page, but uh, if any viewers know how where this should be pinged or something, um, yeah. So maybe just optimize the query a bit. Uh, well, I would write these things as uh, like that. Um, but I think the label service optimizes that anyways. Thank you for trying to find the importer. Hopefully that works, and this needs to stay as it is. Uh, filters true here equals that here. Um, I would leave out this tur at these at this point, but that probably doesn't make any difference to be honest. Uh, oh no! Wait, I see what it's doing now. Census. If that variable is bound then this optional block was there. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so it's using... Oh, but no, we can do that more easily, I think, by saying that the... Uh, so what does this do? It, where does it actually get the population? I see it always, 
It gets all the population statements. And then um, gets again just the ones with a census and just the ones with followed up. And then filters for the statements originally found, which match the best known for that year, which is a bit roundabout, but I'm not sure if there's another way to do it. So let's just leave it as it is for now. Uh, sorry. This can definitely be shortened, I think, to just census other estimate. Bind this as the preferred method. I think that should be correct. Um, and then if the preferred method is bound, so we filter for the method being the preferred method or for it not being bound at all. And I think that should work. Let's try that. Uh, I don't remember already how long the original query took, so I don't know if this is going to be any faster. Um, and it might be possible to optimize this further, but I'm not sure. I'm thinking something like, so this was 20 seconds now, and the results look the same. So I definitely use uh, this instead of the other longer coalesce. Um, that might be a bit more efficient, probably doesn't make much of a difference. And for the rest, I would think about something like select year, country, label, and then coalesce of um, census population other population estimate population um, as population where something like optional um, Something like this, uh, PS, P1, oh, it's, it's the census population, and then it has a point in time, and then this is, um, wait, census is the one I wanted right now. And then we can finish the optional block already and bind string from year of uh, D as the year only in the end, and you would duplicate these optional blocks um, for the other two things. And that, actually, I, I've almost written the query already, I feel like, so let's, might as well just finish it. We need something like this, but without population statements, so it's really just <laughs> the first part, and I didn't need to copy the rest. We have the census population like this, we have the estimate population, which works exactly the same way, except that the item ID is a different one. And we have a third one, which is using a method with the filter that method, I can copy that from up here, I think. Um, it's called other here, okay. Uh, the method is neither of the two known ones. And filter bound, uh, the D should be bound, so we should, at least one of those optional blocks should have matched. Um, what else do we have there? A label service. Uh, we can add that, and then it filters the year to be greater than 2005, uh, which we can, we can actually do that more efficiently by saying that filter uh, the D should be greater than 2005 or greater than or equals to 1st of January XD date time. So doing a filter on the direct date value and not on the year is almost certainly um, more efficient, I think, though I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference. We still group by and order by these things. 
anything else I missed? I don't think so. I removed all the comments, of course, so if anyone wants to use this query, they should add those comments back. Bad aggregate. Um, oh. Yeah, wait, why are we grouping? We shouldn't group at all. Um, in this version, at least, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and that is completely rubbish. Um, because what do the results look like in the table? Year, country label, and population. And I think they just need to be in a different order or something for the line chart to work. Was that it? No. Um, I think if we wrap that in a string call, does it work better then? No, no. Okay. Okay, so I don't have time to debug this right now, sorry. This is how I would try to write the query to get these uh, populations separately. Oh, wait, this is an estimate population and this is an other population. Um, well, that's one reason why it might have been very broken. Let's also call this other. I'll be at it. And see if that works better. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, well something's going wrong here, but that's how I would try to do that query. But the other wor way already works for you, so stick to that. If you want to optimize it, I would try it with uh, this. And if you if that gets you anywhere. And thanks a lot for solving the Pakistani population problem. Uh, I th actually, let me just go to the history and uh, thank you for that. Okay, and with that, I think I am done for today. Thank you all for joining. This was great. So many people here. And I'll see you when I do this again. And yeah, I think that's it. Goodbye. And I'm waving my hand for some reason. I, I'm not using a webcam. But <laughs> Bye.